give us the old here we are that's the old hey, thumbs up oh, uh, nothing like Welcome asking when back. we're going to start recording and learning that we've started we're doing it now um yeah i mean this my... is cocktails tangents and answers thanks for coming back we're gonna talk about inbound i'm finally allowed to share my opinions Yes, yeah, so you are guest. She's off the leash, kids. You are guest She's off and the leash. host today. We're giving Caitlin a double <laughs> job, which means she will talk twice as much. Um, probably not. It'll probably be the same amount of talking. Um, but yeah, so this is part two of our, ep- uh, our inbound uh, episodes. Um, Discussion. Caitlin, yeah. this was your first time at inbound. It was. And so we're going to talk about that. And I got to tell you, it felt like we were in a hurricane, which is... A good old fashioned segue it's to this week's cocktail. cocktail. Oh, yes. Fantastic. Um, um, our you... notes say that this simple and refreshing rum cocktail was originally just rum, lemon juice, and passion fruit syrup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's the classic. Yeah, yeah. I got to say, I um, eh, rum is not what I would do. It's just, uh, I'm coming around to it because that is what my in-home bartender has been on to lately. So I think, um, he'd be really into this. We could, we could sure try it. We could try a cocktail hurricane. I think I actually got him hurricane glasses like two years ago for Christmas. Yeah. I mean, hurricanes so. are good. Um, we used to. They're pretty. When I lived in Omaha the first time back in the nineties, uh, there was a restaurant called Butsy Ledoux's. It's not here anymore, uh, but it was a Cajun restaurant. I can't imagine why Butsy Ledoux hey, didn't last. Butsy Ledoux did like, it was like $2 hurricanes on Thursdays or something. But they had two sizes of hurricane glasses. You didn't realize this until you kind of got into it. They were shorter on Thursdays for the $2 versus, well, yeah. like, I think they're regularly like $5 or something and they were tall. It might've been cheaper than that. Cause what is, two, what is two nineties dollars in $2023? I don't have that math. Um, but they were cheap I ask. and right? I was younger and had no money. So we would go there because we could walk because we lived across the street, like Kitty Corner. Oh, that's um, so responsible of you. It was. And we got completely lit because uh, we were in our 20s and 30s. And that's what we did. But the fun thing was we went there so often that the staff realized that if we got drunk, we would stay and eat dinner because why not? And then we would <laughs> over tip because we are drunk and we had dinner. So like yeah. the third or fourth week that we were there, they started bringing us the $2 hurricanes in the big glasses. <laughs> because <laughs> they're like this will work out for me on my tip so that could be why Butsy Ludu isn't there anymore because we ran them out of business by drinking <laughs> you drank them under glasses. the table literally uh two dollars and 1990 is worth four dollars and 70 cents today oh okay so I mean, it's still a pretty cheap cocktail by today's terms yeah, five dollar a five dollar knockout i'd be you know because like a hurricane is not nothing no i mean uh, and so it's this yeah pretty much booze i mean a little lemon yes as uh, four four ounces of rum yes. aged or equals equal parts aged and white hmm. uh two ounces of passion fruit syrup or fashionola syrup i would also submit that you could sub in my new favorite liqueur which is chinola and that is a passion fruit liqueur uh, delightful and okay. beautiful. And fashionable uh, is a blend. That's what I was yeah. Like it's a blend of, yes. of juices that's typical yes. in your hurricanes, invented by some people I think named fashionable, but uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Probably I not. Think that, I think it was just a, I think it was a, a, a portmanteau of passion and fashioned into, if I had to guess, okay. fashionable, like passion. Anyway, uh, four ounces of rum, two ounces of, of passion fruit syrup of your choice. Two ounces of lemon juice and an orange slice and cocktail cherry for garnish. Add all of the ingredients aside from the garnish, obviously, to a cocktail shaker with a couple of pieces of ice. Shake until the ice has dissolved, which is called dilution. Interesting. So you're going to shake that for a hot minute. Yeah, so it it does say small pieces of ice, though. So don't put in like Mm -hmm. big giant cocktail balls in there. You're going to be shaking. No, just like cubes. Yes. But your arms are going to look fantastic if you're shaking that. Uh Yes. Uh, This is where Tyrell really wants a pebble ice maker because um, Mm. hurricanes look really pretty with the the sonic ice, if you will. Yeah, and it probably doesn't take as long Uh, for them to break up and dissolve. 
No, it's well, and that's so typically um, like tiki drinks are really overproof, but they're sweet. And so they're, they're deceptionally sweet and will knock you on your butt. But that's why you serve them over pebble ice so that they get diluted over time. They're not meant to be crushed because that's how you, that's how you end up over tipping at Butsy Ledoux's. And that's that. Uh, yes. So there you go. Shake into a shake until the ice is dissolved. Stir it. Uh, I don't know why you would stir that. Zach, I have questions about your uh, your instructions. Just pour it into a cocktail glass filled with pebble ice and garnish with your slice of orange and a cocktail cherry. I swear the stirring wasn't me this time. It was just inspired <laughs> by another episode because last time zach really really so likes did to you stir. did the ai tell you to stir this drink zach i feel like maybe that happened <laughs> no ai no ai <laughs> all right no ai on this one it doesn't do a good job with drinks that's what i've learned <laughs> Ooh, you're coming through my headphones a little bit hot there mister oh sorry i got too close to my mic I that's think. all right zach's just excited he's like i gotta talk again on the intro <laughs> all right well speaking of talking again on the intro um i think that we will not belabor this one because we've got a lot to talk about and you're one of our guests caitlin we so do. we've got you and we've got jesse glade our chief creative officer who his first time at hubspot 2 he was gonna go or inbound he was going to go last year i think or was it two years ago and then he had a baby it was last year I think. And he had a baby and that was just not a good idea to leave his wife with the infant for a week while he left. So, um, leaving your wife with the two year old is better. I mean, yeah, or leaving your husband <laughs> with a three year old. She is. We yes. love her. So let's, uh, let's just take a little break and we'll get into it with you and Jesse on uh, your first year at inbound. And we are back. Uh, I'm going to play host because, Caitlin, you are a guest. I'm a guest. I'm a guest in my own home. <laughs> you are. And you are in your own home right now. It looks lovely behind you. Home. I love your kitchen color, too, by the way, that nobody can Thank see. So but much. let's talk about things. My favorite thing when the radio, a radio show talks about, like, something they're looking at or, like, we're watching this video. And describe like, Don't it. do that. You're a radio show. Stop. All right. Yeah. Really let's... experienced hosts will describe it. They'll say, like, tell me what you're looking at right now. And I'm like, oh, you really know what you're doing. Ari Shapiro, you brilliant genius. You're actually, since Jesse's here, I think he would agree. You're On my screen, anyway, you look fairly branded because I think it's a black wall behind you, but it looks pretty navy. And then you've got, like, that seafoam green going on. We just need, like, mm -hmm. an orange stripe, and you're good to go. You will not probably find any orange stripes in my home unless they have been put there by a two-year-old with a well, three-year-old with a crayon. Ooh. Just like a nice bowl of oranges in your kitchen would be. <laughs> yeah, there we there go. There you go. A okay, okay. That could or, be, I would, I would be on brand. Or clementines. We get, or Do you know, know what would orange? actually be on brand for us in terms of agency and also my home is like a giant bowl of Cheetos. That, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <All right. laughs> I was going to say goldfish crackers, but Cheetos. Oh, that too. could also work. Yeah. yeah. Yep. There's a lot all of No, those are, those are all smushed into my carpet. So. Oh, well, that's exciting. So your carpet <laughs> kind of looks, if you had navy carpet, it would look like our office carpet. With a little <laughs> orange flex in it. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> all right. 90 seconds into it, and we still haven't even talked about what we're going to talk about. So the point of this is you both went to Inbound this year with Jessica. We talked to her we already. Did. Old news. <laughs> Done with it. We want to get your opinions as uh, first timers because you both went to uh, inbound for the first time. So first question is, was it also your first time to Boston? Yes. No. Okay. So yes for Jesse, no for Caitlin. But Jesse, you have family in Boston, I heard. I do. Yeah. I have a cousin and his wife and three kids. So I got to hook up with him. We went and had supper one night, which is really fun. Don't get to see him very often. So uh, it was a fun That's little bonus of the trip. Part. I've done that too. I've got some friends out there on the East Coast. I stuck away one night and got uh, dinner with this friend of ours and had a really, really good time and got caught up uh, with him. So good. All right. Well, cool. So my biggest question is, so you go and do the registration and that's blah, 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 but things are covered up. 
first impression when they opened everything up and you were going down the escalators into the expo? <laughs> it's a lot of people. It's my a lot of people. Uh, yeah, that was probably my like inner monologue during a lot of it. Was just <laughs> a lot of people here? It's so people. Introvert panic. That's fantastic. Well, and it was. I think they said it was like twelve thousand people this year. Yeah, um, that is a lot of people. I mean, the town I grew up in was only thirty three hundred people. So, I mean, twelve thousand <laughs> is four, a lot. Four Denisons. <laughs> yes, I mean it was a building I worked in in Chicago. A building I worked in Chicago had six thousand people in the building, so yeah. two of my town could fit in that building, which was bizarre. No, okay. I um, I had been I've been to industry conferences before. I did um, the professional photographers conference like in twenty what would have been twenty seventeen, okay. and so I knew kind of like what an expo floor would look like and what the sessions would you know what to expect a little bit in terms of the number of people and like what a you know a trade show might look like in that regard so did this feel pretty standard then or did it feel like they'd gone over the top with some areas it definitely felt a lot more fun yeah like Mm -hmm. the the food offerings on the floor mm. and the kind of lounge seating and the, the co- cocktail intermixing. Selection. Yeah, yeah. There was definitely like a a much more laid back vibe to some of that. Um obviously like your sales booths are gonna be salespeople mm-hmm. and you know they are trying to talk to you and give you socks and a tote bag and and whatever when really what they want is for you to use their product, which yeah, right. <laughs> it's, I got <laughs> a, this, a branded umbrella so from I'm last holding year. Up this branded tiny umbrella. Like the thing is like six inches long, but it's a big umbrella when you open it. And it's from uh, Mountain, which is uh Ryan Reynolds, right? Yeah. His digital TV service that he owns. Because he owns an agency. He owns that. Oh. He's Deadpool. He's everything. But yeah, so I also got socks from them. Um, but I gave those to somebody else. I wonder if that's who tried to give me socks this year too. I got the guy socks, came but- by they were from a different place yeah he's like do you want some socks and i looked at him i said no i don't (laughs) no thank you are those socks filled with cash if not then no well and i also was like i just went through a major closet declutter i don't want your socks Mm. thank you so much i will never wear those (laughs) so fairly typical expo lots and lots of people but a little bit more fun Mm -hmm. like i know uh, a couple years ago, might have been actually, it might have been last year. They had a bathtub that had like ball pit balls in it, like kids' ball pit balls. That's and, awesome. and it was like, and of course, I look at it and go, "Well, that would be fun," but I am. There's no way I'm getting in that in front of all these people, like even fully clothed and everything. Um, the other thought... thing, oh, go yeah, ahead. go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'll race you. The other thing I really appreciated because I am crispy on the inside. I automatically was like, "Oh, this is a lot of money on like." stuff that gets tossed or like the all of the decor pieces and things and jessica actually said that last year well it would have been last year because i think they didn't do in person the last you know whatever before that but she said that they actually in their sustainability plan um make it a point to reuse a lot of the decor and things so that really um was encouraging because my first thought when i walk into stuff like that is always like ah, that's so much garbage. Like we're making so much garbage. So I was really um, heartened to see that they had thought about the earth when they were doing all of the like big color block decor and lights and they reuse stuff from year to year. So kudos to you inbound. Thank you so much. (laughs) They have a sustainability pledge that they have, um, Mm -hmm. that they go for. And like, what's really fun to me is the giant inbound letters. It's the same letters. They just do something different with them every year. Mm -hmm. Um, so they'll be painted or they'll look like shrubbery or, you know, whatever they do, but the base of it is, is the same. Um, Mm -hmm. very cool. So I've done other conferences in that exact same space. We used to do conferences for LPL in there. So it was wild Mm -hmm. to me the first time I went, cause it was very familiar and I'm like, Oh, this is the room where we did all of our live tweeting from and blah, blah, blah. But then it was so fun and unique as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. One thing that I really noticed too was how well branded the whole place was. Mm-hmm. Like yes. they were they were on top of it. Um like signage, wayfinding, like it was so consistent, really mm-hmm. well thought out. Like the whole place just looked like HubSpot. 
um, which was pretty impressive considering mm -hmm. the size of that expo center. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so really, really, they nailed that part of it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Now you know why the tickets cost uh, what they do. <laughs> <laughs> um, very one cool. ticket pays for one coat of paint on last year's light up letters. <laughs> just on one letter, though. Just on half of the right. eye. <laughs> Um, no, I, that's one thing I like too. It's very organized. So how did you guys feel about like finding things, getting to the sessions, finding food? Um, how was that for you guys compared to other conferences or just in general? Considering how many people there were and how big that place was, mm -hmm. it was surprisingly easy. Um, yeah. whether that was the, the wayfinding thing that I mentioned or like the people that they kind of had directing traffic. Um, I thought the app, it, in all of its kind of shortcomings, the the map was actually really handy. I think I used that a lot. Um, so if you weren't by, like, I would look up where I was going on my to my next session, like at the end of a current one, and that kind of helped. So I didn't really have a lot of trouble there. I am not the person to ask about directions. I just always would stop and be like, hi, can you help me get here? <laughs> so I was like, I tried to use the app and the live map and I'm like, but which way, where am I? Where am I? <laughs> like, couldn't figure it out. So, uh, but I will say that the event staff and I obviously office extrovert made it a point to stop like six of them over the course of the three days and be like, you are doing a great job all of the people in the turquoise shirts were spectacular like the event staff because they don't obviously all work for hubspot or inbound it's like a hired team of people but they were spectacular so spectacular like cheerful for the most part and there had to have been probably like three or four hundred of just the event i mean like tons of event people so like managing a staff of that size is insanity right but they were so cheerful they all knew where stuff was they were happy to help like even if you stopped for a second and you were like looking they're like hey do you need help finding something so like staffing wise i you can't like overstate how spectacular the the event team and like the tech people and the speakers and just like that vibe was very cool for sure Nice. Yeah, they're um, very, very helpful. I just, I'm just realizing as you're saying that I completely forgot to give you my double top secret restrooms that nobody uses in that conference <laughs> center. I, that, it's super valuable information, and I discovered. Keep your voice you down, Mackie. That's an offline conversation. Um, I will not tell anybody. But if we go again, like, and we will go again. We've got tickets for next year already for at least a couple people. But, um, but yeah. So that was my big thing because sometimes even the men's bathroom lines would be super long. I'm like, what is this? Like a, a night at the <laughs> opera during Rent or whatever? Like it's good lord there's never this many men in line for a bathroom yeah um but then when you there find wouldn't like, be that many men in line at rent either let's be honest well it depends <laughs> on where you're at in chicago i yes. suppose that's true um, Fair here, maybe not <laughs> so let's get into content then um yeah what was your i guess what was your favorite like big room session like when you guys were all on the main stage and I'll tell you, Jessica talked about like the um, Brian and and uh, Darmesh. Yeah, That's I was a like good one. blanking on that. That they just were really on. You can tell they've known each other forever. They had really good chemistry, mm -hmm. but they also were being very useful and very attentive to the audience. Um, yeah. So, so that was kind of one of hers. She had others as well, but she said that one was surprising because in, in previous years that like the main stage session, they haven't always done it together. They've done it separately sometimes. And it kind of mm -hmm. like falls a little bit flatter um, because they play off each other well. Mm -hmm. So that gave you time to now think about what main stage session you enjoyed. The most. <laughs> I liked Reese Witherspoon a whole lot just because I think she is a super interesting study of women in business and like leveraging your power for good um, and also being like smart and savvy and she talked a lot about how um, because of the the WGA strike, she wasn't able to talk about like pro her past projects. 
Um, but she was able to really go deep on her production company and then also her um, clothing company. And she talked about like learning business terms and, you know, finding a mentor and being not, not being afraid of asking questions. And, and um, I found that very interesting and, and respectable about her. I out it's actually not the first time I realized this when we were walking out. Reese and I uh, were at the same Taylor Swift concert in Nashville. So oh, I texted my best friend and I was like, uh, me and Reese are hanging out again. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, that did, is like, interesting. did you tell her? Um, it yeah. is interesting with the celebrities that they bring in that they would be kind of barred from talking about certain things because of the strike, especially when you've got like a Reese Witherspoon. She's got all these shows. I mean, there's a brand new... Um, season of uh, the morning show morning on show. apple tv yeah. but she can't talk about it because you gotta wait mm-hmm. and then you've got others that have been uh skirting the rules and not doing well with that so good for her yeah yeah um, i think that keynote that they do at the very end one it always annoys me because when you're getting back to the midwest and you're flying to the west it is very difficult to get out of we're not talking about time. that we are not talking about um, getting home that could be a whole other episode. <laughs> I'm just talking about schedules Cocktails, in general. Cocktails, tangents, and answers after dark. We Cocktails, should have done an episode from that hotel. Oh, my God. Um, could you imagine? We were punch drunk in the Revere, Massachusetts, Four Points by Sheraton. And not hurricane it, punch drunk, unfortunately. No, just like slap happy. It was the most ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was just talking in general every year, like it's so late that mm-hmm. you've got like this tiny window to get to the flight that will actually get you home like mm-hmm. before 2 a.m. Um, or before an airport closes out here and you mm-hmm. can't land anymore. Um, but yeah, that's always a really, really good one. OK. OK, Jesse, mm-hmm. what was your favorite? Um, I really like the founders one. They you can just tell that they get along really well. There was some good stuff that they said, like. Uh, giving each other performance reviews and stuff that was uh, you could just tell that they they have a really good working relationship which is mm-hmm. good to put on on stage in front of a lot mm-hmm. of people but <laughs> I probably would I say liked... uh, Anthony Huberman um, I wondered if that was, was going to be yours because yeah. I was like I liked about? him too but... <clears throat> it was just a lot different than all of the other ones mm-hmm. uh, it kind of switched from like a working um like working focused and like all the tools and because you just got kind of tired of that by the end of the day Mm -hmm. because it was three days of all of that so that one was more Mm -hmm. of a reset like how to you know healthier habits how you can how you can be a little bit healthier and it was just kind of refreshing i like taking care of yourself and optimizing your Mm-hmm. brain and your what was it um what was the, yeah what was yeah. even the title of that one i can't even, i don't think no i had idea. notes in that one <laughs> i didn't take I notes because i was i was just listening in that one yeah um, yeah yeah well and he didn't have like slides or anything either so it wasn't yeah, like it was, you were like oh i gotta yeah, write down these cool. four bullet points yeah yeah that's kind of cool um i what i the, really oh, appreciated about um brian and darmesh too was that they talked about like points of potential failure early on where it was like, what were your shortcomings? Like what came up in your performance review? And I can't remember if we talked about this or not, but it was like, we did a little bit with Jessica. um, Yeah. Yeah. Where it was like, they, they admitted some things that were problematic for them and then kind of what they did or how they, they worked to address that and change that for the betterment of themselves, but also their like company and their company culture. And I just, I think there's not enough opportunity for us to say like, oh, I, you know, I have this problem and I'm actively trying to fix that about myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that introspection is hard. And I think especially Mm -hmm. at their level, I mean, they're, it's a publicly traded company. It's worth billions of dollars. Um, It can be rough to be vulnerable like that. But I mean, Brian Mm -hmm. going through his, you know, nearly dying, I think probably did a pretty big reset and he had a skiing accident. Um, one of the things that struck me, and I'll bring this up for Jesse mostly, but um, that Jessica brought up that I think is interesting and something for you guys to think about as we look at, you know, a five or 10 year transition plan that we're talking mm-hmm. about is how they were equal partners, right? So they were 50-50, but mm-hmm. one of them had veto power. If they couldn't mm-hmm. agree, 
because you can't just not do things in business. You've got to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of those that's really interesting in which areas does who have veto power if you're a 50 50 organization um, mm -hmm. and having been in some of those and not had that. It's like, oh, that would have been really good yeah, didn't, didn't they say they only had to use it like one time, I think, mm -hmm. is what they had said, which and then they like mm -hmm. went through all the background on that and that that yeah. was like an agreed upon thing like years before that and they never had to use it until that moment and then they did did so. they say what it was was it small to medium no that wasn't it they had like really worked to identify that they wanted to serve mm -hmm. small and medium businesses that they didn't want to be an enterprise company i can't remember if they identified that or not i might want to go was, back and watch their I think keynote that, i think good. they did too but i can't remember exactly what it, it was like a <laughs> clearly it was not important. a shift a shift in something and they went one direction instead of another. Mm -hmm. um, well, it yeah, was you're like right. A split in the and road. then and then they said like ultimately we would have been successful either way, but we're you know like we stand by the choice we made and. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sometimes yeah. the two I think paths that's bring the you other... to the same place. Well, and it was like two kind of divergent like business strategies or something. I can't remember. I wish mm -hmm. I could remember what it was, but that's right. Um, that, that so, introspection, too, of saying, like, yeah, we made this choice and it changed the trajectory of our business, but I stand by it. Like, I think that's also very admirable. And I think that can be hard, like, saying, like, yeah, I made this choice. I mean, and it's it's a parent thing. It's a business mm -hmm. owner thing. It's a leader <laughs> yeah. thing. It's a boss thing where sometimes you have to say, I made this choice and I'm standing by it and we're going to see where we go. And mm -hmm. even being able to admit, well, maybe it wasn't the right choice or maybe there were other options that might have played out better, but this is the choice I made and this is the path we're going down. So mm -hmm. let's go. Um, I had a boss who said, um, who basically used the bus metaphor and he said, you know, this is the bus. I'm giving the bus direction on where to go. And if you want mm -hmm. to go there, get on the bus. If you don't want to go there, nobody's stopping you. Get off the bus, which he bite, <laughs> which he meant you can quit or I can fire you, um, which was interesting. And there were some big contentious things with like rebrands and product changes mm -hmm. that happened at a couple companies I was at. Yeah. And, and there were people who opted to not get on the bus. And you know what? The whole organization was better off for it. Um, because they made yeah. the decision and you're all rowing the boat in the same direction or pet yeah. animal you don't really manually power a bus anyway uh -huh. it's like um, the, like the flintstones bus maybe it yeah. could be how about the beer the driving drink <laughs> the, the pedicab the, the pedicab <laughs> thing um <laughs> So what about favorite sessions? So uh, aside from the big stage stuff that you guys all did, like smaller sessions and things, um, mm -hmm. what was your kind of aha moment? Give me an aha moment from one of those sessions. One of the things was um, all of the stages in your sales pipeline have to be an action that is completed. Like every time ah. you move some, it's not like a holding or like a, I was like, oh, shit, that's really good when you're talking. Like, that has stuck with me. Mm -hmm. That it's like once the action is completed, they move on. And it's not like, a, oh, I have to do this or I have to do that. It's like it's a, it's like a consumer action that is completed to move them through your sales pipeline. We're going to have, have you looked at our sales pipeline to go through and be like, hey, we need to change this thing? No, because <laughs> I've been trying to, like, implement some of this stuff and then also um, – remember all of the things that i thought i knew before i think most of ours <laughs> are though because it's like meeting scheduled meeting happened contract sent, yeah. decision maker bought in like it is something that has happened that moves you forward mm -hmm. um sorry i just bumped my mic hopefully that wasn't super loud <laughs> all right so that's a good session um jesse nugget aha moment something that stuck out for you i don't know if i had any like big like eye-opening things um i there was a good one that Jessica and I went to on Friday um, that was like tips for productivity and scaling your business. So they did, I think it was uh, five like personal productivity tips and then five like business ones um, from two guys that were really good. And th there was just a lot of good stuff. Got a, uh, added a few books to my reading list from that. Um, I'm about halfway through one already. So getting some good wow. stuff. Wow. Um, What's the book? Uh, traction. Okay. It's, uh, the like EOS, um, uh, like business implementation thing. So that, that was a really good one. They just had a lot of like really good little things in that one. Like, um, 
Uh, they mentioned the inbox zero thing, and then I'm flipping through my notes here. Uh, they had a really good um, – the four quadrants of, like, do, plan, delegate, and eliminate. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying that out on my, like, to-do list this week. It's not, not going too bad. I think I could get yeah. used to that. So a few, like, li- a lot what of is- small little things. Tracks just for it. those of us that uh, have many emails, what is inbox zero? You just like try to have no emails in your inbox. That's sounds... yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, so you have to. The idea is that you deal with everything that comes in. So everything that comes in either needs a response now, a response later, to be forwarded, to be deleted, or to be filed. And so okay. you do, and there may be other ones, but you do all of those things. So the idea is that if you've got something that needs to be done later, you actually put it in a folder that is to do, like it's a, a tomorrow or a next week, et cetera. Um, mm. If it needs deleted, you delete it. If it needs archived, you archive it. If it needs forwarded, you forward it and then file it and get rid of it. So the idea is yeah. at the end of every day, you have nothing in your inbox. So there's a piece of software called Superhuman that I've been working with that is an email software. The, it doesn't work with HubSpot's um, widget thing. Yeah, so yeah. it'll, yeah. it'll this... still do the, the logging with the BCC, but it won't track, unfortunately. So I, use, I don't use it for everything, but the idea is that you've got separate boxes, right? So there is this just other box that you don't even pay attention to. That's where all the stuff you don't care about goes in. But you've got your VIP okay. box, your priority, and then in that you can hit short codes to like file something and remind you tomorrow at 9 a.m., remind you next mm. week at 9 a.m. And so what happens is it disappears from your inbox and they hide it and then it comes back when you need it, mm-hmm. uh, which is really cool. It's something I can show you guys sometime, but um, it's not cheap, but it's not super expensive. Um, and if it helps organize things, um, it can be really good. Interesting that like not, not surprising at all, but interesting that an nope. organization and structure – type of a thing was something that you gravitated toward um you are the most like buttoned up like process driven creative i've ever met in my life which i think i've said on this podcast before truly spectacular Um, but i appreciate it like yeah they mentioned that inbox zero thing i was like oh i kind of do that already anyway so yeah yeah it's really about getting rid of stuff like a lot of times i'll just be like oh i don't care about that and i'll just let it ride and it'll float through the inbox um but then i think i'm like oh i should just hit delete like i should just delete that (laughs) just delete it yeah so um we're probably coming up on time given um this session i feel like we could do like six more sessions like this Mm -hmm. Um, but since you guys this was your first year think about the whole conference in general and i've got some ideas but what tip would you give to somebody who next year is their first time they're just coming to inbound next year for the first time i have two two Two, good we'll take them well three i have three tips First tip, uh, pack some snacks, which I did. Beef jerky? Some gr- no, not the not the beef jerky that I bought because apparently it's not good. This the the me that was buying snacks for this trip is different than the me that eats snacks, and I don't really eat beef jerky. But I was like, what if I am locked inside of the convention center for two days and cannot find any other food? I must have protein to sustain me. So I bought like three bags of beef jerky to bring with me. Okay. It was dumb. Don't do that. Anyway, bring a granola bar that you actually will eat. Put that in your backpack. Number two, wear much more comfortable shoes than you think you're going to need. Like, it's so much walking. The convention center is huge. That feels really stupid, but, like, just, just. It's miles a day. Like, it can be, you can walk five miles easy in a day there. Yep, yep, yep. And then the third thing is not specific to conference, but it is specific to a thing you should do in Boston, and that is. Go to Cantina Italiana in Little Italy and eat literally anything on their menu and you will be so happy. So happy. All right. Those we could do ones. just a food and beverage episode of Inbound. We could. I one of my recommendations. I would only is a food talk well. about the pasta that I ate there. <laughs> it Fantastic. was spectacular. All okay. right, Jesse, newcomer tips. Um yeah, but I just could, one. I can talk about the food right. and <laughs> and stuff um i would say gosh that's a probably 
just go through the agenda. And so this is what I did like a week mm-hmm. before I went through the whole agenda and I just added everything that was interesting. So I didn't care about time or day or where it was um, Ooh. and just added like a bunch. So just add everything that you think is interesting, save your seat, add it to your calendar, whatever. And then once you've gone through that whole list, um, then go to your calendar and say like look at things that overlap look at uh which and then you can kind of start to narrow down and say like okay Mm -hmm. these two are at the same time this one seems good but the other one is a little bit more interesting or leave them both on there and make a judgment call like Mm -hmm. five minutes before on which one you're going to Uh, there was a couple that i did that too like oh i have both of these on here um i think that helped it helped like cure some of the overwhelmingness of it yeah Oh, there's so many sessions. Like, what's going on? It's like, nah, here's everything on my calendar is what I'm interested in. So I don't have mm-hmm. to worry about anything else. And that kind of helped keep everything straight. In well, that's my so head. much better than how I usually do it. Like, I'm going back and forth between <laughs> calendar, Imagine the thing, process, calendar thing. Like, I'm going back and forth. <laughs> but I love yours. Just dump it all on your calendar. And then if you decide you don't want to do something, you can just back out of it. Or keep them both overlapped, hold your spot in both of them, and then decide which one you want to go to. And somebody will be grateful in the standby line that you gave them a seat at the one you didn't go to. Um, That's a good one. And mine is do that early. Watch for when they publish the agenda and get some of your stuff, especially the critical stuff, on there right away. Because some stuff does fill up. Some doesn't, but some does. Um, So that's one of mine is is do it start early. Same thing with hotel. As soon as they release the hotel blocks, um, grab one. Uh, My trick is always to take uh, the hotel you guys stayed at actually is the one I typically do it. Um, It's just about a block or two away from the convention center. Um, We book their refundable rooms early. And then when they publish, like I actually could go do that right now. When they publish their rates, then I can always cancel my rooms and book at their rate, assuming it's lower. It usually is. One year it wasn't, though. Um, but yeah, definitely get that hotel that's walkable. The shuttles are terrible. You don't want to do that. Boston traffic is a nightmare. Um, so that's one, get a hotel nearby and do it early Two, pre-order your stuff from Dunkin' Donuts. So you just have to walk up and grab it and leave. Um, and you will do Dunkin', not Starbucks. We got burned. We got burned on our first day and I couldn't forgive them. Yeah. They just did. You both, you both had a bad Yeah, Both Jessica and I were like, eh. This isn't good. So then I was like, Duncan mm. is dead to me. Caribou mm. forever. <laughs> Fair enough. And then my last one is, it's a food one. It's eat it, gather. Mm. That was good. And drink it, gather. The server there was my favorite part. <laughs> he was not ready for. It was the level of shenanigan that I. Jesse was also on his shit that day. It was spectacular. Jesse's like, how many ounces are in your beer tower? And the guy was like, I don't know. Like, Nobody's ever ounces? asked me that before. <laughs> He's like, it's like eight beers. And Jesse's like, so I shouldn't drink that by myself. And I was like, uh, not if we're walking out of this restaurant. <laughs> All right. So maybe take yeah. a, a forklift to get Jesse home after his <laughs> beer tower. <laughs> Um, or bring someone else who likes the same beer that you do because that's jesse's problem is jessica and i are both like eh i'll take a fruity cocktail thank you so much (laughs) just their spicy margarita was good yep start coordinating now for who you're going to take with you to help you with the beer (laughs) i should also go on record (laughs) (laughs) i know i know zach's in for a good beer hey if you're still on the east coast you're a cheap flight or drive (laughs) we just have to get your ticket We'll see. I, I, Jessica told me not to say this out loud. She's like, don't Uh-oh. tell Rich that. He'll take you up on it. I was like ready to purchase my ticket for next year on the plane. I was like, sign me up. I'm coming back. End of story. Purchase your inbound like, ticket or your plane ticket? Yeah. Inbound. All I don't it. think plane oh, tickets okay. for next year are on sale. Well, yet, we have but... two and we'll get a free one again because we'll stay platinum and then we'll get a discount yeah. and we'll see if it's 25 or 50%. They lowered that discount this year. Otherwise, we might have sent another person. Yeah. Um, so you missed it, Zach. If they would have kept that discount at 50%, we would have sent another person. Um, I do think that, though, from a content standpoint, it would be really interesting for you. There's a ton of content stuff, ton of video. There, there were a lot of like really good content ones that I just couldn't yeah. get to. But um, yeah, my dream is I, I would love to just close the agency for a week and take everybody. 
Uh, I don't know as though that would be possible. Uh, I don't think Boston's ready for us. <laughs> could you imagine? No. Um, I'm picturing the 12 of us at Uno's. So when we checked into the hotel that this is, this is my closing story. When we checked into the hotel that we had to emergency book because there was weather along the entirety of the Eastern seaboard, like we could not get home. So I was like, let's just call it. We're going to book a hotel here. We'll get up at the crack of dawn tomorrow. So I like picked the first hotel that had reasonable rates and an airport shuttle in the morning. And we check in and (laughs) the first thing is this hotel had a sign in the lobby that said, welcome back to Boston. And I was like, we didn't fucking leave. It was so funny. (laughs) And the poor, the poor, uh, like, what are they? Reception? I don't know. Guest attendees, attendants at the desk were like, what is wrong with these people? (laughs) But so then I looked at him and I was like, Julie, Miguel, because obviously I remember their names. I was like, do you have a bar? And Julie, sweet Julie, was like in the parking lot, which in this part of the country means somebody's got a cooler in their trunk. And I was like, I. Perfect. Where? (laughs) Jesse was like, Jesse's like, I'm down. I don't even care what they're serving. I'll drink it. It's Sam Adams seasonal and everyone wins. I could have done a beer tower by myself that night. <laughs> that night, but, oh my god, it was just uh, much like when I think when was it Jesse? Was it you and I that went on those video shoots and everywhere we went there was a restaurant like a bar in the parking lot of the hotel? Yeah, I booked <laughs> yeah. all your hotels. And yeah. You're like yeah. great job. That's right. They all had a had a really good like one had a Buffalo Wild Wings and something else, and we were like, this is great because we go back to the hotel. We walked yeah, we could walk like fifty feet and we were within like lots of food. Fantastic. All right. Well, I'm glad you guys had a good time. I'm glad you feel like you Fantastic. want to go again. Um, yeah. I know you're waiting for your queen of uh, inbound crown. Yes. Uh, yes. We'll work on yes. that and see if we can thank get that so done. Um, thank you. But yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> it was great to talk to you guys and get your perspective. I'm glad it was worthwhile because it's expensive. It costs mm-hmm. us quite a bit of money to send four people out there. Yeah. Uh, three people. Were we four? We were oh. only three. I was like, you we were only three. Only three. You were only yeah. three, right? We sent three people. Never mind. Um, yeah, so I think that's okay. where it's valuable. Like when you talk about rooms and stuff, like Jessica and I shared a room and that was fine. Mm-hmm. So it's like. I generally don't. I would never require somebody to share a room. But if no. you volunteer, I'm like, yeah, I'll save the money. That's great. I mean, <laughs> right. we use some Amex And Jessica and I are get, both like, yeah. Yeah. We get 5X We're points cheap. on digital media. So all our digital media goes on the Amex and we get all of that. So um, we'll have more flights for next year. So we'll see what we can do and uh, how many people can go. All of the people. Let's all go. It'll be so fun. And that's a wrap for another episode of Cocktails, Tangents, and Answers. We hope you had as much fun as we did. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to connect and have more fun, you can find me on social media, at Rich Mackey. It's just my name, super simple and easy. And you can find our agency at antidote underscore seven one. That's A-N-T-I-D-O-T-E underscore the number seven, the number one, across all social platforms as well. As for me, catch me at home sipping a craft cocktail, expertly prepared by my in-home bartender, who happens to be my husband. Stay tuned because we'll be back with another episode every other week featuring a brand new cocktail recipe, more tangents, and of course, we'll do our best to answer all your burning marketing questions. And if you have a question you'd like to send our way, head to ctapodcast.live to shoot us an email. Or even better, leave us a voice message. Remember those, Caitlin? On our Ew. hotline at 402-718-9971. Your question might make it into a future episode. For now, make sure to like, subscribe, and join us again next time for more fun and insightful discussions. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers. <laughs>